India has witnessed over 35,000 communal riots in 65 years of independence. The last 30 years have seen large-scale riots almost every 10 years. The 1984 Sikh riots were followed by countrywide communal clashes post Babri Mosque demolition in 1992-93. Ten years later, the nation witnessed the bloodiest ever pogrom in Gujarat in 2002. And now, in 2013, we have just seen the bloody riots in Muzaffarnagar. When the Congress party came to power and formed union government after dethroning Bharatiya Janata Party in 2004, it announced to make a law to effectively check communal violence. But nine years have since passed, the communal violence bill has not yet been passed by the parliament. Communal Violence Prevention Bill, which has been on the anvil for a long time. On some pretext or the other, it has been postponed. The other day, the Muslim leaders, we were meeting the Prime Minister. This was mentioned by Dr. Zafar Islam Khan Saab and some others also. So he said that uh, there has been difference of opinion within the Muslim community also on what should be the content of the bill. So that's fine. There has to be diff there, there are differences of opinion within the government also. On, on, in many cases, there are differences of opinion in so many political parties across the spectrum. But then that does not mean that the government is a, a welfare state. Yes. So welfare state, and it's a government's duty to make the law, which is which the government feels is useful, and they are doing it. Even the Waqf bill has uh, been passed very recently as a welfare measure. To what the government thinks, they are consulted, you can consult the community, but it is not that if two factions of the community are not agreeing on what should it be, then the government said, okay, fine, we will not pass the bill. That law, which is in the, in the cold storage, actually the draft, should be brought back and he should uh, present in parliament or at least uh, issue it as an ordinance, which they did actually. Yes, you see how they, when they want to do something, like the American nuclear deal or like the protection of uh, political criminals, uh, they can go to any length. The winter session of parliament has started on 5th December 2013. There are apprehensions that in the run up to the general elections in 2014, the Muzaffarnagar episode can be repeated in other parts of the country for ulterior political gains. Now both community leaders and civil rights activists are demanding passage of the communal violence bill. They should stop taking that the political interest is superior to human interest. The passive passage of this bill, communal violence prevention bill, is a call for the protection of human interests. And its postponement is perhaps a manifestation of political interests. I am saddened by the fact that, that the UPA government, although any CJ person had, has forwarded it to uh, the government, mm -hmm. uh, they have not found the political will yet to pass it. However, there are many who do not think that merely a new law can check communal violence. There are several laws which can check the violence if they are implemented honestly. They say political will is required to crush the menace. People say, and I also argue, that there should be communal violence prevention bill. People may argue that does that bill, that act, if it be, if that proposed bill becomes an act in parliament, would it stop communal violence? I say no. But it would be deterrent. Media seems to have made a great deal out of this communal violence bill. You know, I have over 30, 35 years, how many bills have come, how many laws have come, how many acts have come, what have they done? Have they been able to prevent violence? So the point that you raise about political will is the important one. And for the political will to be exercised, to ensure that secularism continues as the main tenet of our constitution in this country, that political will does not need to have laws like the communal violence bill. Fine, you have that. I mean, you know, that's a separate debate. There's nothing wrong with that. Then the question arises, how can India address the problem of communal violence? Some say justice should form the core of any governance. 
Some others say police should be first decommunalized and minority representation in police forces should be increased. I think we need to do two things. We need to very clearly assert to the political powers that justice is central to any uh, governance. There can be no model of governance in this country where justice is not central, whether it is justice for women or it is justice for minorities or it is justice for caste uh, victims. Justice has to be center to, central to any form of governance that will be acceptable to the people of this country. What we have seen in Dhule rights, in Forbesgarh, in Mopalgarh, that the character of rights is also in many places changing. It is in all these three places, in Dhule, Forbesganj and Gopalgarh, it is the community versus the police. Which means that the state police has become so communalized that they have opened fire on Muslims. In all these three places, one-sided opening of fire. So any solution which one looks at has to keep in mind that the police force has to be decommunalized. That is the first step that your police force needs to be sensitized, to be decommunalized and it has to have a sizable proportion of people from the minority community who are more sensitive or people who are extremely secular. Every police station must have two to three extremely secular police officers who would stop this kind of happening. More importantly, the new anti-riot law must have provision to penalize high-ranked police and civil officers if any communal violence happens in their area of jurisdiction. This is the main demand of the civil society which the government has not yet fully accepted. What are we trying to do in the communal violence bill? Most importantly is to create a new crime which is called dereliction of duty by public officials with command responsibility which means that uh, if government official whose duty it is to prevent the violence, to control, do all the things that I have spoken about, does not do their duty. That is recognized to be a crime and with command responsibility means not just that officer but whoever has commanded that person is also, whether it's a minister, chief minister, whoever, it becomes criminally liable. Our major demand was command responsibility. That is one major point. If we agree upon that, then half the things are solved. We are saying that the SP or the DM is to be held responsible for the communal violence which takes place under them. And if it takes place under them, then they have to be penalized. The moment you bring in that, I mean, it will automatically stop half the places. Because if the DM knows, if the SSP knows that I can lose my job if the communal uh, violence takes place, then they are going to ensure that it doesn't happen. Communalism has spread its tentacles all over the country. Communal forces are hell-bent to push the country into the fire of communal violence. Can Congress and other secular parties join hands to pass the communal violence bill in the ongoing winter session? The answer will test the secular credentials of the political parties. If the secular parties needs to save this country from the fire of communal virus, then they have to come to a common great form to fight the fascist forces and the first agenda of this common great form should be to enact a harsher law which can deal with the communal virus, with the culprits who have a you know, the wishful thinking of destroying the social fabric of this nation to gain political power. The UPA had in 2004 promised that a communal violence, uh, a bill to prevent and protect against communal violence will be passed. It is important for UPA, if it at all has secular credentials, to pass that law because that law will send the deterrence to every SP, to every DM, to every SHO, to every minister that if you will not do your work, if you will not perform your statutory duty and exercise your power to protect those, and it can be anyone, not just minorities. Even in Muzaffar Nagar, we do know that on a smaller scale, members of the other community have also been killed. Whoever is killed, you have to stop that killing. And if you will not do that, if you will not exercise your power, uh, you will be held criminally responsible. I think it is important for people who, are, who actually believe that everybody's rights need to be protected, 
that we must ask for the passage of the communal violence bill before the term of this government is over. Unless that kind of law with real teeth is, is enacted and actually enforced also, not just uh, to, 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 to let it remain on the, on, the, on the law book, that will not help. But if it is really enforced, uh, then we think that there will be a way uh, to uh, uh, really have a, a riot-free India. Right. Riot-free India means an India where everybody is free, safe and secure.